If you're not playing Hunter in 9.1, you're doing something wrong. Both BM and Survival are looking really good so far in Season 2, so we decided to give you a full update on how you should set up your character for the new season. We will be breaking down talents, gear, macros, and everything else you need to know for both specs and PvP. So take a seat and enjoy our update to these high tier legends of Season 2. And if you're looking for a one stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Cap. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our world class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your hunter gameplay up to the level of a pro. We will be developing an upcoming course showing you how to damage, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. Like many classes in PvP, Hunter has some obvious picks for best race on both factions. For Alliance, Human should be your selection since the stun break from Will to Survive is super strong as a DPS class in Arena. This is because it allows you to play with a relentless trinket against rogues, making you much more difficult to kill in setups while decreasing the overall time you spend in CC. For Horde, Orc is your best choice, once again for how well it counters rogues. The stun reduction from Hardiness is really powerful in PvP given the amount of stun effects in the game. We should also note that orcs get a 1% damage increase to all pets, giving you more passive damage than the other horde races. With that out of the way, you're going to need to set up your talent tree, and we're going to show you talents for both specs, starting with survival. For your first tier, your choice here is between Viper's Venom and Alpha Predator. This really depends on what talent you're playing on your fourth row, which we will get to later. If you're playing with Steel Trap or Murder of Crows, then choose Viper's Venom, as it will give you a passive DPS increase. Whereas if you are playing Bloodseeker, then use Alpha Predator, since the talents synergize well together. Guerrilla Tactics is your best talent by far on the second row, as it gives you the highest DPS increase by buffing one of your primary damaging spells. Both Camouflage and Natural Natural Mending are both good options for your third tier. Camo will give you more consistent openers and a very reliable way of resurrecting your pet in the middle of the game. Natural Mending might be better in matchups where there is a lot of passive damage, like against Shadow Priests or Affliction Warlocks. Every talent on the fourth tier has its place in the meta, with Steel Trap being really good in the early season as melee cleaves dominate the ladder. However, Bloodseeker is an alternative choice, especially if you are playing with Alpha Predator, as it will give you good consistent damage. Murder of Crows, on the other hand, is a more burst-oriented talent and works well into low armor targets. Post Haste is by far your best choice for your fifth tier, since it dramatically increases your mobility, which is a huge defensive boost in a melee heavy meta. Flanking Strike should be your default pick on your sixth row, since it gives you an additional bursting tool. Mongoose Bite has the potential to be really strong, but requires high levels of haste in order to fully benefit from its effect. And finally, Chakrams is your default choice on your last tier, giving you an additional ranged burst option option and a way to kill totems and war banners. Wildfire and Fusion can be played if you are using Mongoose Bite from your previous tier since both talents synergize together. BM talents are a bit less flexible, especially on your first and second tier where Animal Companion and Scent of Blood are your best options by far. Animal Companion gives you the highest DPS increase, while Scent of Blood gives you more cooldown reduction on your Bestial Wrath. Just like Survival, your third tier is a toss up between Camouflage and Natural Mending, with Camo being great when you want a reliable opener, and Natural Mending being preferable when you and your pet will be taking lots of consistent damage. Thrill of the Hunt should be your default option on your fourth tier, since it gives you the most sustained damage increase. You can play Murder of Crows if you want more burst, however. Just be aware that its damage isn't as good as a high armor targets. Just like survival, post haste is your best choice on your fifth tier, especially if you are the kill target. You can play with binding shot if you want an extra root effect against melee cleaves, and you don't personally need extra mobility. As for your final two tiers, both stomp and aspect of the beast are always your best talent choices, both giving you the most consistent damage output while having ease of use. Both Survival and BM share a bunch of PvP talents, so we will go over the situational uses of each for both specs. 
In general though, Roar of Sacrifice is usually a default talent that rarely ever gets swapped out. It is an amazing defensive cooldown for both you and your teammates. Survival Tactics is also a really good default option, giving you an on-demand dot removal and massive temporary damage reduction. You should definitely use this talent if you're playing with Camouflage since it can give you clean restealths. There are plenty of situational talents which both specs share. The first is the newly added Camaral Sting. This is a solid general option into comps that lack a poison to spell and is really good into RMP as either a defensive silence on the mage to reduce damage or as a blanket on the priest in order to reliably land traps. Tranquilizing Darts was also added in 9.1 and can be played into any team with a Resto Druid since it can decrease the duration of all hots whenever your interrupt or trank shot is used. Wild Kingdom is a niche option in situations where you find your pet constantly dying in arena. If the enemy team is focusing your pet, or if your healer isn't doing a good job keeping it up, you can play with this talent to avoid these problems. Dragon Scale Armor is not frequently played due to dot cleaves being less popular, but it should be used against any dot based spell cleave like Shadow Play. High Explosive Trap has high value into warrior teams or melee cleaves, especially on maps with a Z access like Blade's Edge, so consider picking it up if your team needs an extra defensive peel in these situations. As far as survival specific talents are concerned, Tracker's Net is another solid option into melee setups if you want an extra peeling option, but can be a bit redundant if you're playing Steel Trap. Mending Bandage is also incredibly valuable into Assassination Rogues and Feral Druids, especially in 2v2 where you can completely deny their damage. As far as BM specific PvP talents are concerned, the newly added Kindred Beast should be your default selection with Roar of Sacrifice and Survival Tactics, since it gives you a ton of extra team utility by giving you a much shorter cooldown on Master's Call. The Beast Within was redesigned in 9.1, now granting fear immunity on top of increased attack speed for all nearby friendly pets, including your partners. This should be selected into Warlock and Shadow Priest teams, since it gains enormous value into any team with a fear effect. Overall, Hunter Talents are super situational and there isn't really a cookie cutter setup. Instead, you should select your talents based on the needs of your team. With that in mind, playing with Roar of Sacrifice and Survival Tactics is good into most comps. Luckily, your best Covenant is the same for both specs and hasn't changed going into Season 2. Venthyr is by far your best choice since it gives you one of the strongest active abilities in the game with Flayed Shot. This ability works great as both specs because it gives you an entire burst ability and ranged execute that you can pair with other burst cooldowns. Door of Shadows also works really well as Hunter, giving you extra mobility and another way to reliably land traps on enemy healers. And it just so happens your best soul bind is the same for both specs, with Nadia the Mistblade being the best option. Here we have the Soulbind paths for both specs, with some of the conduit slots varying slightly between them. On the left is Survival, and on the right is Beast Mastery. Nadia gives you a really good balance of potency, endurance, and finesse conduits, while also having the strongest abilities for both specs. These abilities include Thrill Seeker, which gives you another damage modifier to sync with your burst. Agent of Chaos causes your Door of Shadows to disorient targets, making it a good setup option to combo with Freezing Trap. Nimble Steps is a newly added passive defense defensive proc, which roots enemy players when you drop low, which will be really useful in the early stages of the meta when melee cleaves are dominant. And finally, the new end cap ability called Fatal Flaw is an absolutely broken damage modifier, giving you 20% increased versatility every time your euphoria ends, once again allowing you to sync up your cooldowns with its proc. With your soulbind selected, you're gonna need some conduit, so let's break it down by type. No matter what spec you're playing, Empowered Release is a mandatory potency conduit, giving you more flayed shot procs and increased damage on your ranged execute. For survival, both Strength of the Pack and Stinging Strike should be your remaining conduit selections, as both give you moderate damage increases in arena. For similar reasons, both One with the Beast and Bloodletting should be your remaining two potency conduits for BM, once again being best for overall damage output. For both specs, Resilience of the Hunter is your best endurance conduit, followed by Rejuvenating Winds and Marksman's Advantage. Resilience of the Hunter should always be selected since flat out damage increases are always strong in PvP. And finally, Tactical Retreat and Abruscade are your best finesse options. Overall, finesse conduits aren't too important, but both of these give you slight mobility advantages in Arena. Gearing has changed slightly in Season 2, including some gear that you can get through raids. 
But before you get any gear, it's important to adhere to your stat priority, which varies slightly between both specs. For survival, you want agility and versatility, followed by haste and crit, both of which are far better than mastery. For BM, it is slightly different, with crit and mastery having relatively equal weights. In any case, prioritize buying pieces with agility, versatility, and haste increases. All PvP gear will scale up 13 item levels in instance PvP, making it largely best in slot for most players. Your goal should be to cap conquest every week, looting the vault on resets and gearing accordingly. We highly recommend buying your weapon the first week it's available since it will give you the biggest DPS increase overall. As for your trinkets, unless you are human, we highly suggest playing with the medallion trinket, since an instant CC break is super strong in a fast-paced meta. As human, you can play with the relentless trinket, which works really well into comps like Rogue Mage because you already have a stun break with your racial. For your second slot, the newly added shackles trinket is performing really well in arena right now, giving you a massive boost to your primary stat and being a really disruptive offensive ability. The emblem trinket is still a solid defensive choice in matchups where you might want an additional defensive, like when you you are playing RMP. And finally, you can opt to play with the Insignia Trinket if you want to do as much burst as possible by lining it up with your offensive cooldowns while also giving you a huge boost to your best secondary stat. Some pieces of the new Sanctum of Domination raid drop gear with special sockets for gems called Shards of Domination. These shards have special effects which are nerfed by 50% in PvP and can be put on very specific pieces from the new raid. While you certainly can benefit from this gear in PvP, it isn't mandatory for your success due to Conquest gear scaling up 13 item levels in arenas and RBGs. If you manage to get a piece of socketed gear from the new raid, make sure it has versatility and haste on it, otherwise it is probably not worth using. Luckily for you, your best legendary is still the same for both specs going into season 2. The Craven Strategium legendary is arguably one of the best effects in the entire game for PvP. It can be used to remove debuffs that otherwise can't be dispelled by players. This includes things like Spear Bastion from Kyrian Warriors, Bleeds from Assassination Rogues and Feral Druids, and pretty much any slow in the game. Combined with the Survival Instincts PvP talent, this makes your Feign Death one of the best defensive cooldowns in the game and is a massive counter to DOT based classes. For the meantime, we really don't recommend ever swapping this legendary in Arena. It's simply too good to pass up for now. Finally, let's go over some of the most important macros you will need as a hunter in PvP. Focus macros are an integral part of any class, and you generally want at least one focus macro for your interrupt so you can quickly deny casts without swapping targets. One type of macro many players don't know about are cursor macros, which allow you to use targeted ground spells wherever your cursor is currently located. This prevents you from having to click the ground before using your traps, flare, or binding shot. You should also make macros to use Roar of Sacrifice and Master's Call on yourself. This can be done by simply adding an at player command right before the spell name. And we highly suggest making similar macros, but this time for your party members. Make separate macros with at party 1 and at party 2 commands for each of these spells to quickly use them on your party members regardless of who you are targeting. Next, we highly suggest making stop casting macros for some of your important spells like Disengage and Feign Death. This will ensure you always use these abilities instantly in case you try and use them while casting. Finally, we highly suggest making Cancel Aura macros for your aspect of the turtle by adding a command to remove the buff in order to use your interrupts or other important spells. This will ensure that you can quickly react to casts or other important events even if you have aspect of the turtle up. We have a list of spells you might want to consider here and you can modify them if you'd like with focus commands as well. And there you have the introduction to our hunter course for season 2. If you're interested in seeing more, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow where we will be updating all of our content for patch 9.1. You can gain access to the rest of our class courses as well as our exclusive arena commentaries which take you into the minds of the best players in the world. Both BM and Survival are looking really strong going into Season 2 and you are off to a really good start if you manage to follow everything in this guide. As always, thanks for watching, see you soon.